Hey guys, I'm back, and I'm going to talk about two of my most recent cops. They're very nice shoes, and they also come with a good cause, so that was very cool to me. I just recently got the Dornbecker 4s and the Dornbecker 95s. I had to get them in a size 7, but everybody should know that I'm a size 6. I got them in a size 7, but I'm really not complaining because the cause behind them is just so dope to me. So I'm going to start the video off with the 95s. This is the box for them. So before I go into any of the tech details on the shoe, I want to tell you guys a little bit about the kid who actually designed them. His name is Daniel Blair, and he's suffering from a brain tumor. Of course, he was a child at the Doran Becker Hospital. He's visually impaired, so most of the sneaker is bright red because that's easier for him to see. On one side of the shoe, it says, Be Brave in gold lettering, and then it also says, Be Brave on the other side, but in braille. There is a lightning bolt on the back of the shoe, which is supposed to represent one of his favorite books. And on the bottom of the shoe, he has a few more of his favorite things. He has music notes, a piano keyboard, um, Wii boxing gloves, and there's even sound waves down here. But now to move on to all the tech stuff of the Air Max 95. Alright, so the Air Max 95, big surprise, dropped in 1995. It was the first shoe ever to feature Air Max cushioning in the heel and the forefoot. I have a grade school pair, so there is no Air Max cushioning in the forefoot, but I do have it in the heel. Most of you guys watching probably will have a men's pair, so you guys will know what I'm talking about. The shoe was actually based on the human anatomy. Let's see, the midsole represents the spine. The graduated panels are the muscle fibers. The lace loops and the straps are the ribs, and the mesh is the skin. Nike actually wanted the swoosh on the shoe to be bigger, but the designer, he, um, he actually fought for there to just be two smaller swooshes on the shoe. The midsole on the 95s is polyurethane, which is the most dense, durable, and stable midsole material. You can identify it by its smooth, rubbery feel and the tendency to turn yellow with age. And it's also one of the heaviest midsole options available. Onto the outsole, it is the waffle pattern. The waffle pattern was actually invented by Bill Bowerman. The squares absorb energy when the foot impacts the floor. And the rest is just specifically designed textured pattern. The outsole is solid rubber. The wavy layers on the upper are stitched in rows for added support on both the lateral and the medial side. The shoe has an exposed symmetrical speed lacing system. The shoe does have an internal heel counter for added heel stability. And it's located in the heel. You can actually feel it. The OG insole that were used in 95s used to be polyurethane, but now they just use Ava. And on this insole, it's pretty cool. I'll take it out for you guys. It says, just like everybody else. And that's pretty much all I'm going to touch on these. So I will now show you guys the fours. And now, here is the box for the fours. These fours actually have a really big Superman theme to them. That's because the child who created them, Isaiah Scott, who was also a patient at the Doran Becker Hospital, he got the nickname Superman from his mom, who would say he was strong as steel while he was going through all his treatments. He also put the Superman logo right up front. He says he chose the neon laces because green is his favorite color, and green is actually what Nate Robinson wore when he jumped over Dwight Howard. But I also heard that the green kind of represents the kryptonite, the, the whole Superman theme. Um, all of the arrows on the shoe, they are said to create the ever-changing directions that life has taken us in. That's why it's like up and down and left and right, they're just all over. The lacing, I'm sorry, the stitching, they say is blue to add to the Superman theme. He actually has his face on the shoes, which I thought was really cool that he put himself on there. And underneath, again, he has the Superman colors. And his favorite number is written in there as 7. The 4s originally came out in 1989, and jumping right into all the tech stuff, the outsole has flex grooves in the forefoot for natural flexibility running up and down the court. It has a multi-pattern harem bone traction, which goes in different directions, and that's actually the first time it was used on an Air Jordan. The stars in the toe was taken from the popular Air Force Ones. The shoe has a heel max air visible air unit and a traditional encapsulated air unit in the forefoot area. 
The midsole on these is actually Phylon, and if you look on the medial side, the Phylon's a little bit higher to make a wall to prevent your foot from moving over the footbed. The OG ones, I think, were polyurethane. The upper is made out of synthetic leather, and the straps on the side are for increased ankle support. The plastic TPU things are for modifying the lockdown of lacing your shoe. The mesh mid panels and the tongue mesh is also for breathability. The grate on both the mid panel and the tongue is TPU. There's a TPU internal heel counter for adding more heel stability and a rubber heel tab for a little bit more support in the heel, which is to help outing on your shoe. The upper is polyurethane coated for added durability, and the insole on these is Ava. Alright guys, well that pretty much sums my video all up. I encourage all of you to go and check out the videos Nike posted of both the kids, Daniel and Isaiah. They're really quick videos, but they're cute. You get to learn a little bit about the kids, understand why they picked the certain things they did on their shoes. And that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think of them.